you're about to go over to basic training, meet your drill sergeants. I don't know. I don't want to talk about shark attacks because if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. Who At the end of the day, you're still going to get your shit pushed in when you go through basic training for the next 10 weeks. So if you don't get your shit pushed in there, it's it's coming. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to escape it. Roger, sorry. Welcome back to another episode of Roger Sarn Podcast, and I'm your host, Sarn Cruz. And today we're just going to be talking about some, the Army basic training, right? What to expect when you're going to training. So you've decided you want to join the Army, but you don't know what to expect. Here I am to help you out. So first thing that, just to get just the backstory out the way, first thing you're going to do, you're going to decide you want to join the Army. You decided you wanted to join the Army. Then you're going to go talk to the recruiter. You're going to get his spiel, her spiel, whatever you're going to talk about. And then you're going to tell them what you want, what you want, don't want, what you like, what you don't like. They're going to be like, yeah, 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 okay, cool. So they get you over to MEPS. MEPS is pretty much where you find out what you qualify for. Because I can want to be um, MI, military intelligence, but I only qualify to be a medic. You know what I mean? So, something like that. So once you take your ASVAB score... You score whatever you get. You get whatever you score. Then you're going to go talk to the, the MEPS, the guy at MEPS, kind of like a recruiter, same thing. And then they're going to give you, like, hey, this is what you qualify for. Pick it. And if I chose to be a medic, I qualify for it. I'd be like, yeah, I want to be a 68 Whiskey Combat Medic. So lock you in, do all your paperwork and all that stuff. They swear you in. And then they put you in the red roof in. If it's still the red roof in, I remember 15 years ago was definitely the red roof in for a night and it was probably, um, it was a fun night, but it was, it was weird being in that, in, in that hotel. But yeah, um, they put you in a hotel for a night, ship you off the next day, and then you arrive to basic combat training. (laughs) Ha! (laughs) Got it! Yep. Oh man, it's, uh, it's awesome. Once you um once you get the basic training, you the the be, the first part is gonna be they're gonna do all your admin data. So you're gonna go into the reception company, probably called the golf company or something like that. You'll freaking get in there, and then right there is gonna is where they process you into the army. At that point, they're gonna do all your if you're married, you need all your certificates. They'll put all your dependents on. Uh, you get your ID card. Um, there you do all your finance to get your pay right. So you get all your uniforms. At when I came in, they made us buy sneakers and all that stuff for like PT. You get all your PT uniforms. So you get everything there, ready to go across the tracks. Because when I went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, so we were on one side, and then we crossed the tracks. Boom. All right. So um, you. So now, oh, you get you get the famous buzz cut. No one's going to. Um, escape that when I was, especially when I went, everyone got a buzz cut. I messed around and I didn't cut my hair beforehand. So I had kind of like a mini fro, if you will. And man, when they cut, they cut with no, like they don't care. Like my, my neck, I almost got whiplash cause he just kept going and going and going. Like they don't care. Like they got to process like 200 individuals at one time. So don't expect no, um, no love, uh, when you sit down in that barber's chair. So you're, you're done. You're about to go over to basic training, meet your drill sergeants. I don't know. I don't want to talk about shark attacks because if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. Who At the end of the day, you're still going to get your shit pushed in when you go through basic training for the next 10 weeks. So if you don't get your shit pushed in there, it's it's coming. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to escape it. So you're going to go through four phases, right? When I came in, it was red, white, and blue, good old America. Now they have yellow phase. And I guess the army is kind of like going into like a 10 week phase. So instead of it being three, three and three or three, three and four, whatever it is, now it's two, two weeks per phase. So in yellow phase, you'll, you'll learn obviously, well, not obviously, you'll learn army acronyms such as leadership. Um, You'll learn the warrior ethos, and then they're going to smack you in the face with the soldier's creed. And you're going to look at that thing and you're going to be like, oh my freaking God. What is this? It's so long. Uh, how am I going to memorize this? This, that, and a third. Don't worry. They got you. You're going to memorize it one of a few ways. They're either going to smoke you to death until you learn it, or you're going to study it and learn it. But 
you're going to learn it. By the, by the end of week 10, you will know the Soldier's Creed. Um, you're going to do PT, and um, around this time, they'll teach you about Army programs and first aid and all that cool stuff. You're, they no longer do, do um, sticks, needle sticks anymore, so you guys are safe from that. But you still do the overall first aid and buddy carry, carries and all that stuff and how to save a life. Um, then you'll move into red phase. Uh, red phase is they're going to introduce you to weapons. You're going to learn like combat skills and you're going to do your little obstacle course and all that cool stuff. Um, this is where the shit starts right here because in red phase is, is like that's the tightest phase of all. I'm not, you know what? I'm talking about for, for me because I don't know what yellow phase is. I haven't gotten into yellow phase or I haven't experienced yellow phase, but definitely red phase was tight. Like you couldn't do, you couldn't fart without getting smoked, but definitely, um, you got to think about it. They're going to introduce you to weapons and all that stuff. So it'll be kind of, um, it'll be very stringent. And then you'll move into white phase. Again, they're talking about weapons and all that cool stuff. And you'll probably do like a, a two day field training and all that shit like that. But um, and then you got blue phase. It's kind of like where they ease up on you and all that cool stuff. Um, you'll probably do a land nav course around this time. But overall, in week, between weeks one through ten, you are going to get skull freaking dragged. It doesn't matter what you do. You're going to get pissed off at your battle buddy. You're going to be pissed off at, um, at the drill sergeant. You're going to be pissed off at everyone else but yourself. But at the end of the day... You or nobody else has control over the fact that you're going to be doing push-ups for no reason. You're going to be doing push-ups because Jane decided to do something. You're going to do push-ups because Jamal ch decided to do something. You're going to do push-ups because you decided not to do something. So either way, be prepared for it. You're going to get your shit pushed in. Like I said, just roll with the punches. If you try and fight it, it's... It's going to be worse for you because now you're just going to be a, the, the salty soldier in the corner and not want to talk to nobody, and pissed off at all the drill sergeants, and they're just doing their job. You'll you'll see by the end of blue phase when it's time to graduate and all that stuff, how cool they, they become and how approachable and stuff like that. Um, other things that you're going to learn throughout basic training, it's they're going to teach you the customs, courtesies, traditions, and all that stuff. You're gonna learn how to march. You're gonna like. You're gonna learn everything. They're gonna teach you the rank structure and all that cool stuff. They're just gonna teach you overall how to be a soldier, right? Um, when you get to basic training, you just gotta think about that. It's a worst case scenario in the army. Like this is a oh shit shit hit the fan. This is what the army can be like. So you're gonna probably start off eating at the dining facility or defect. And then you're going to push into eating in the field and you're going to be, you're going to meet Mr. E, which are the MREs. And you'll quickly learn that there are a few that you're going to like, and there are many that you're not going to like. And if you're not a hustler or have never been part of a hustling environment, you will learn how to hustle when it comes to the MREs. What do I mean by that? Like, you're going to learn how to barter. Like, the barter system is going to kick in. Someone's not going to like Skittles, but someone's going to like the freaking M&Ms. Um, some people are going to have these Ranger bars, and they'll just stack up on them. They will never eat them. And then they'll probably start charging you for them or something like that. It, it's <laughs> it's a freaking shit show. But, yeah, um, MREs, man, there's two boxes that I know of, the Alpha and the Bravo boxes, and they each have um, numbers one through like 14 or something like that, and you'll know which ones are going to be the best ones. To me, my opinion, Chili Mac and the Tuna MREs are hands down the freaking, the bomb. So you'll have your own little taste palette and all that cool stuff, so you'll figure out what you like, but for me, that was it. And, um, They'll have separate, like, hot rations and stuff like that. So you're not just going to eat MREs when you're on the field. Sometimes they'll have, like, hot chow in the midday or something like that. So you'll probably eat in the morning at the defense. This is, like, when you're out in the field and stuff like that. Like, on, not on a normal day. On a non-normal, on a normal day, you're going to eat at the defect three times a day. 
on a day that you got to get it, you'll be out in the field or you guys are out there doing stuff that you're going to be out all day. In the morning, you'll probably hit the defect. Midday, you'll probably get some hot chow if you're lucky and they ordered it and they ordered it and the order went through. And then um, in the evening, you'll probably get an MRE or something like that or it'll probably be switched up. You get an MRE in the, in, in the midday and then you come back. But either way, you're going to get a taste of the MREs. Um, a typical day in, in basic training is going to, you're probably going to be waking up at four, four thirty if you're smart, because if PT formation is, is at, is at six or five thirty whatever it is, then you'll probably need, yeah, if PT formation is at five thirty you'll probably need to be there about 15 minutes early. You'll probably have to wake up your battle buddy. Like you guys are all going to have to be down there. So nothing worse than going down there. And then you're missing one or two. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get your shit pushed in. I promise you. So it doesn't matter if you're like the first one down. As long as you have someone up there and they're not on time, it's it's, it's going to be a shit show. So yeah, you'll, you'll start your day probably about 4.30, waking up 5 o'clock probably latest. Be out there doing PT from like 5.30 to 6.30. And then you're... Your typical end of the day will probably be about 1,800. Sometimes it'll run longer, about 2,000, like 8 o'clock at night. So when you're in basic training, just know whenever you get a chance to sleep, take advantage of it. Uh, Speaking of sleeping, uh, you probably come from most, most, I mean, on, on a high end, you probably had a roommate or two, or some of you guys had your own house or your own own room. This is going to change because now you're sleeping in potentially up to 40 man bays. So your platoon, all the males are going to sleep in the same um, bay. Then the females will get all consolidated on the other side. So if you're a female, you're going to be on the in in your own bay with all. It'll be way less of you guys more than likely because obviously the ratio of the military you got more men than females. But if you're a male. You're going to be an all-male bay, females, all-female bays, and it, and it just gets crazy, right? But yeah, you get, if someone farts, you're smelling it. Someone snores, you're hearing it. Someone wakes up to go to the bathroom, turns the light on, you see it. So it's, it's, it's a very different experience in which I would just get prepared mentally for. If you like, if you like church, then they do offer church services on Sundays. They're not freaking... They're not savages or nothing like that. So they do allow you to go to church and stuff like that. So Sundays, I'm not going to lie, we used to go to church on Sundays. It initially started, at least for me, it initially started because on church, is that's where you're going to get your like your snacks and stuff like that, your cookies and, and your juices and stuff that you don't really get a chance to eat while you're in basic training, right? So... Let me explain why. So, for instance, we spoke about eating at the defect, right? So, when you eat at the defect, it's a regular defect. They have a buffet of stuff, and they also have your cakes, your fatty foods, right? Uh, I remember, I specifically remember one. I'm not gonna say his name. He's probably out the army, probably in the army. I don't know, but I'm not gonna say his name. But Private Such and Such decided that he wanted to eat a cake. When Private Such and Such decided that he wanted to eat that cake. The drill sergeant saw that. And this was the introduction to our actual diet. Like we like this made sure that we knew that we were on a or a, a sugar restriction. We all get outside to formation, and drill sergeant says, Well, private such and such had had himself a grand old time. You know, he had himself a nice cake and um, he washed it down with some so, something else sweet. And he went in, he proceeded to talk about how their job is to make sure that we are to the fittest, are to our best ability of being fit. So when someone eats a cake or something fatty, they have to make sure that they get those calories out, the carbs, all that stuff. They, they just drop the calories. So we got our asses smoked and smoked for a hot second outside in the heat. So that takes me in that, that brings me back to why initially it started 
that I wanted to eat the cookies and all that stuff when I went to church. But then obviously I'm a, I'm a Christian, so no, I'm Catholic. So I, I, I kept going to mass, but it, it initially started because I wanted some damn sweets. But, um, yeah, you do have church services. It's, it's, um, it's just a way they, they have all services too. So it's not like they only have a uh, mass for Catholics and stuff like that. They have every service you can think of because in the army they have chaplains and chaplains that study each denomination. So, yeah. Um, what's, what's the actual purpose for basic training? Their purpose is they're going to break you down and they're going to build you back up. So, don't fight it, as I said earlier. It's just, a, like I said earlier, it's a crash course on the worst case scenario on what would happen if you, if shit hit the fan and you, and you're in the army, this is how you would take care of yourself, right? So let's move into some tips on kind of like how to like survive or prepare yourself for basic training. Uh, first thing I want to say is read or watch videos on YouTube listen to podcasts, same thing that I'm putting out there. People who have already been through it. Um, I've seen many videos of um, actually current soldiers that are either going through it because now you can have your phones in basic training apparently and soldiers who just got out of basic training and they can recollect a lot better than I can that I'm an old crusty sergeant that haven't been through basic training in 15 years, right? So I'm just going off of memory, but theirs are kind of like a lot more recent. So watch videos, get all the information you can. Once you do that, um, another thing that you can do is make sure that, so when you come to basic training, they're going to, you're going to end up with like three duffel bags and probably a rucksack or two duffel bags and a rucksack with all your army stuff. So what I would advise you to do is pack as light as you, as, as light as you can. Um, and I'm talking about like maybe three outfits um, enough underwear for those outfits. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Enough underwear for those outfits and maybe a pair of sneakers two max. Uh, I wouldn't bring my whole, jo my, my whole J collection because it's, it's not going to be worth it. As soon as you get there, all your civilian stuff is going to go into like a locker or something like that. You won't be able to use it because you can't go anywhere during basic training. Right. But yeah, so pack light. Because when you get to um, reception, you have your your stuff, and then they're gonna give you all the stuff that they're like the the rucksack and a couple of uh, duffel bags. So now you're carrying potentially two suitcases plus what the army's giving you, and you're just gonna look like a shit sandwich the whole time. Because if they do get, decide to kind of like break you guys off in the beginning or rush you and stuff like that, and it's just gonna be a bad day for you. This is where all these videos you see, like people just scrambling and not knowing what the hell to do. Imagine that plus two other freaking suitcases. Um, another thing that you can do is prepare yourself mentally. What, what do I mean by that? You're coming in the army, not just for a job, is because you want to change. You want to change in life. So be open to that change because... The change is going to come in a general manner, right? They have two. They have two hundred troops that they have to transfer from a civilian mentality to a soldier mentality. So it's not going to be tailored to you, but you know for a fact that their intentions are good. So prepare for change. Shit is going to go crazy. Make sure that you know it's nothing personal. It's literally every troop goes through basic training. This is not a, uh, they're not reinventing the wheel. This is something that's been going on for a while. So they're going to instill discipline into you. They're going to teach you that like, like too many soldiers come in with, with the mentality of, 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 of a street mentality. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Can't nobody get in my face. Don't be getting in my face, man. I don't play that shit. This down the third, man, that's what drill sergeants do. You're going to have the brim of their drill sergeant cap is going to be touching your freaking forehead and oh well it is what it is right take leave the tough guy tough gal mentality at the gate and come in and be prepared for change uh make sure the next thing i say is uh make sure that when you when you get there 
and and you kind of start settling in, latch on to somebody like just find like a battle buddy. You know what I mean? Someone that that you can share the experience with. And if you have any issues or comments, concerns and stuff like that, that you can just like decompress with. You know what I mean? Uh, mine was uh, uh, private first class Diaz at the time. It was cool because I was able to talk all I wanted to throughout basic training because he was ESL and I speak Spanish, right? Because I'm Puerto Rican. And then anytime we were sitting at a, a some type of um, lecture or something like that, there um, or class or whatever, I could be talking about whatever and they didn't know. To them, I was just translating, right? But point is, find somebody that you can um, latch on to, have fun and all that stuff. But at the same time, be mindful of the fact that you don't know this person from 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 a hole in the ground. So they have no loyalty to you. Because I've I watched one too many videos of people saying, oh, people are snakes and stuff like that and basic training, this, that, and the third. And at the end of the day, no one owes you any loyalty. So just know what you want to talk about with that individual or how you treat them or how they treat you. Just know that no one owes you anything. But for the general experience, I would probably get a battle buddy. Um, another thing is when you're in the Bay, make sure you secure your stuff. You don't secure your stuff. Again, it's going to be a shit show. They're going to, the drill sergeant just come through after you guys are downstairs and the last man is out. They'll come through and do their little sweep to make sure everything's clean and stuff like that. And if private Cruz left his wall locker unlocked, guess what's going to happen? They're going to teach me a lesson. They're going to take the lock off. They're going to start throwing every all of my stuff that's in the locker they're going to throw it out and stuff like that and rearrange or rearrange it they'll do something crazy with it um so make sure that you secure your stuff another thing is you want to secure your stuff anyway because anyone can steal your shit that's 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 also another thing um another thing that i would say is do what you're told um it sounds so simple but for some reason people buck man drill sergeant tells you to freaking jump you just jump you're only going to be jumping for 10 weeks or for the rest of your life if, if, you, if you're a lifer. But, yeah, for real. Um, just just do what you're told, man. It's it's a lot easier for yourself because at the end of the day, Drill Sergeant is going to get his way. The Drill Sergeant is going to get her way because they are the authoritative figure. Um, as I told you before, you're going to get your shit pushed in, so just be prepared for it. So be prepared to get smoked. You're going to get smoked for any and any little thing. So it is what it is. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. And it's something that we all go through. Another thing is be prepared for what's called fire guard. Um, like I told you, it's a 40 man up to a 40 man bay. Uh, so somebody's got to watch you guys. And fire guard is preparing you for staff duty and CQ, which you're going to do with your 24 hour shifts and stuff like that, which you'll, you'll get your, you'll get your um, feel for that. Or you get your portion of it, but yeah, fire guard. It can you can have fire guard at at one o'clock in the morning until two o'clock in the morning. So they're gonna wake you up and stuff like that. So just be prepared to get uninterrupted sleep some days. And last but not least, don't be a blue falcon, or some people call them buddy fuckers, or whatever. Just it's a blue falcon is just an individual that just doesn't have your best interest. You're gonna be volunteering information that no one's asking about, like. Oh yeah, Private Cruz. He was um he was eating in his in his bed yesterday, and he had you know what I mean. Like shut the hell up, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like some things don't have to be told, but yeah, battle a a, a blue falcon is 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 gonna tell on you. Blue falcon is just gonna do what he or she needs to do to look better than you. So don't be one of those. Um, I'm not saying if you are, you're gonna get Gomer piled or not like that, but just don't be like that. Just 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 a moral thing. But yeah, um, again, I won't take too much of you guys' time. I appreciate you guys for um, for stopping by. Uh, thank you for joining the Roger uh, Sarn podcast. Uh, as, as I told you before, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. I start doing the YouTubes. Still a little shaky on the TikTok thing. But yeah, do me a favor. Like, subscribe, download it. Um, leave a review and a comment or comment. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's it's just going to help us get better to bring to start delivering information towards you. Um, another thing, like I said, if you have any um, suggestions or any subjects that you want me to cover, 
You can reach me at rogersarrant at gmail.com. And remember, you don't have to embrace the suck if you got the right tools in your rep. I'm Sarrant First Class Cruise, and I'm out. Roger Sarrant!